Look at this picture. 10 minutes before it was taken, someone in this photo had stolen all the money from the cafe on the beach. However, all these people claim that none of them visited the cafe in the last 10 Ooh. minutes. Who is the thief? The thief is the man with ice cream. Ooh. If he had bought it more than 10 minutes ago, it would have already melted or the man would have already eaten it. Mark and James played in the attic where it was dark <laughs> and dirty. But when they came down, only Mark's face was covered with dust. James's face was miraculously clean. However, it was James who went and washed his face. Why? James looked at Mark's face and thought that he was dirty too. At the same time, when Mark looked at James, whose face was spotless, he decided he was just as clean. To crack this riddle, you need to be very attentive. Okay, consider yourself warned. Hmm. An elderly lady called the police. A detective picked up the call. The woman reported that her neighbor, a young woman called Gina, seemed to have disappeared. The woman hadn't seen her for a few days and got worried. When the police arrived at Gina's house, they managed to unlock the door and found Gina inside, tied to a chair with her mouth covered with a scarf. When she could talk again, she told the police that three days ago, a robber had broken into her house, tied her, and taken all her money and gadgets. The police officers didn't believe hmm. Gina. Why? Look at the date on the calendar. Over there on the wall, see? It's the same date as the one on the calendar at the police station. But if Gina was tied all this time, who was changing the dates on her calendar? <laughs> you got lost in a forest. It's getting dark, and very soon, wild animals will start their hunt. There are four roads you can choose from, the north, south, west, and east. But the north path will take you to a supermassive black hole that will swallow you up. The south road goes through a lake full of huge whale sharks. If you take the west road, you'll end up at the edge of a ginormous hole in the ground that can't be crossed. And the east path will bring you to a sky-high mountain that is impossible to climb over. Which road should you take? You need to follow the south road. Whale sharks present no threat to people. They will let you swim across the lake without any problems. Lauren cooked 10 buckets of chicken wings for a family gathering, one for each guest. But later, it turned out a little Jimmy was left without his portion. Someone took two buckets. Was it Uncle Patrick? He seems suspicious. Or maybe Lauren's son, Justin. He's wearing this creepy know-it-all smile. Or could little Jimmy himself hide his chicken wings in his bag with toys to get another portion? Look at the dog. It wouldn't leave Uncle Patrick's side. It can smell the meat the man has hidden. One night, you find yourself stuck in an old spooky castle. You hear someone chasing after you and you run faster and faster, but suddenly a dead end. However, a bit later, you notice three doors on the wall, but behind each door, there are some horrifying creatures. The first door hides zombies. Werewolves are behind the second door. And if you open the third door, you'll come face to face with bloodthirsty vampires. Which door should you open to have a chance to survive? Escape through the second door. The moon is waxing at the moment and werewolves transform only on a full moon. Look at these students. Who's cheating? It's the guy in the front row. He's balancing an open book on his foot. Ooh. 
It's the year 2158. Jim is repairing the roof of his garage. At one point, he slips, falls to the ground, and breaks his leg. But the next day, Jim is already walking in the park, looking perfectly yeah. fine. How is it possible? Jim is a robot. See that red light blinking over his left ear? They must have repaired him really fast. Another robot committed a crime. Unfortunately, the police were unable to catch the culprit immediately. But they suspended three people, and each of them could be the criminal. Hmm. A police officer had to figure out the true identities of these people. He had a knife, a screwdriver, a bottle of water, and a pen. Which object should he use to reach his goal? He can make the suspects drink from the bottle. The robot will either refuse or short circuit. Now look at these guys. Who do you think is a real superhero? It's not Joker. His hands aren't as white as the rest of his body. And it's not Batman. His mask has no ears. But Superman is real. Mrs. Lawrence went missing on Friday. Her husband informed the police, and they started an investigation. The last person to see the woman was a shop assistant in a jewelry store. She confirmed that the woman, who had been wearing a red dress and red shoes, had bought a necklace that day. On Saturday, Mrs. Lawrence called the police herself. She whispered, I'm locked in some house. I managed to find a cell phone, but I may be discovered at any... Ah! The police officer managed to track the call, but he could only figure out the street. Look at the houses on this street and try to understand where Mrs. Lawrence is kept. She must be kept in this house. Look, there's a tiny piece of red fabric on the fence over there. And we know that Mrs. Lawrence was wearing a red dress. You see a boat filled with people, but at the same time, there isn't a single person on board. How is it possible? All the people on the boat are married. Four witches met up for their annual coven. The head witch looked at the rest of the group and exclaimed, According to the laws of our community, we can't live among people or communicate with them. And still, one of you has broken this rule. Look at the witches and find out who it is. It's the witch in a purple hat. There's a smartphone in her pocket. Three friends, Kathy, Mark, and Lauren, gathered together to catch up on their latest news at Lauren's place. At one point, they decided to play hide and seek. Oh, yeah. When it was Lauren's turn to look for her friends, she easily found Mark. But even with his help, she couldn't spot Kathy. Ah. Can you help Lauren find her friend? Look, she's hiding in a trash can. Ew! Huh, to crack this one, you might need to think outside the box again. A man is pushing a car along the road. Then he arrives at a hotel. He shouts, I'm bankrupt! Why? The man is playing Monopoly. And now let's have some fun. I've got very unusual riddles for you with non-standard answers. An electric train is moving at a speed of 100 miles per hour in the northern direction, and the wind is blowing at a speed of 8 miles per hour in the western direction. Which way will the smoke go? Oh, come on. Electric trains don't produce smoke. 
Great, the next one for you. How many times can you subtract 10 from 50? Just once. After that, you'll be subtracting 10 from 40. How can you make number 1 disappear? You just add the letter G at the beginning, and it's gone. What can you easily hold without touching it? A conversation. If you're sociable enough, that is. My life is hard. Every night, I'm told what to do. And every morning, I do exactly what I was told to do. And still, I get scolded every time. What am I? I'm an alarm clock. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Stuart works as a teacher in an old British magic school, which is located in a beautiful castle. Early in the morning, he's walking down the corridor. Suddenly, Stuart hears a loud noise from the class and goes there to check. He sees three students raising their wands. One of them is a fake wizard. Can you guess who? This guy, he has an ordinary twig instead of a magic wand. Stuart settles down the quarrel and goes to the dining hall. He chooses one of these four breakfast sets. But Stuart doesn't eat any meat or fish. Also, he's allergic to all the purple fruits and berries. Can you help him choose the safest option? First of all, let's exclude the first breakfast. This cotton cheese bagel looks good, but it contains salmon. The second set has toast with blueberry jam, which may cause an allergic reaction. As for the fourth option, fried bacon is hiding under this cute waffle. So, Stuart should choose the third option. Although, it contains some purple cabbage. Nobody said that he's allergic to purple vegetables, too. The cook offers Stuart a deal. If you guess my riddle, you'll get a double dessert. Stuart agrees. Here's the riddle. What melts in a freezer? The frost when the freezer is switched off. After breakfast, Stuart goes to the school greenhouse to say hi to Miss Palmer. She looks very confused. In the morning, three evil wizards opened a magical portal and snuck into the greenhouse. They took the shape of my plants, and now I don't know where they are. Can you help Stuart find them? Take a look at this cactus. It has no root. It just floats in the air without a pot. All the lilies have six petals, but this one only has five. And this pumpkin has a watermelon pattern and color. Therefore, these three odd plants should be the wizards. Stuart walks down the great hall. Suddenly, an owl lands on his head and ruins his hairstyling. Stuart gets furious and asks three students standing nearby. Whose owl is this? Can you spot the owner of this bird? It's this guy. He has the same colored accessory as his owl. It's time for the flying lesson. Three students, Wendy, Drake, and Blair, are about to have a race on their broomsticks. Can you spot who's cheating? Blair is casting a spell on her broomstick to make it go faster. Blair gets disqualified. Meanwhile, Drake and Wendy and Rob get ready to start the race. 
Can you guess who's going to win? Drake has a broken broom, and Rob's position is wrong. It will take him more time to catch the broom and hit the road, so Wendy has the best chance of winning. Stuart begins transfiguration lesson. He gives each of his students an apple and asks them to turn the fruits into stones. And then Stuart goes to the toilet. After a while, he returns and finds a huge toad sitting on his desk. Stuart questions three suspects. Among the students, Drake says, I didn't do it. I was too busy with your task. Luckily, I made it. Bella says, It was Magnus. I saw him catching a toad in the pond last night. And Magnus says, It was Drake. He wanted to distract you because he didn't do his homework. Who's lying? Drake. Take a look at his desk. There's an apple in front of him, but he said that he succeeded in turning it into a stone. Stuart is riding a broom in the garden during his lunch break. Suddenly, someone throws a purple paint tube on his head. Stuart loses balance and falls. He finds three suspects and interrogates them. Billy says, I was just sitting under this ancient oak and doing my own work. Bella says, I was painting Billy's portrait. At some point, I noticed that my purple paint was missing. We both were here all the time. And Lily says, I was just flying on my broom. I didn't even see any paint, sir. Who pranked Stuart? There's purple paint on Bella's hands, but it's okay because she was painting. Billy's outfit looks fine, but Lily has these odd smudges of purple paint on her hair. That's because she hid the tube under her witchy hat after the prank. Stuart is visiting the human world once a week because he loves one local bakery. But today, he finds out that he's not the only magical guy here. Can you guess why? Take a look at this pretty lady. She looks young, but her reflection in the mirror shows she's an old witchy lady. Every winter, a fancy ball takes place at the magic school. Several students perform a traditional dance as part of the opening ceremony. Suddenly, one of the dancers, Lily, loses her balance and falls in front of everyone. Stuart decides to investigate this case and finds out that someone had spilled mm. olive oil on the dance floor on purpose. He interrogates three suspects. Harry says, Sir, I didn't do it. Lily is my girlfriend. Why would I prank her so meanly? Richard says, Lily totally deserved that. She refused to go to the ball with me. I don't know who did it, but I'm grateful to this person. And Bella says, Before the performance, I was taking selfies with my boyfriend. Look at the pictures, if you don't believe me. Now Stuart knows exactly who's guilty. What about you? It was Bella. Take a look at her selfies. She's wearing a witch bottle necklace and it's filled with greenish oil. But now it's empty. The magic school hired a photographer to take fancy pictures at the ball. This photo was taken at midnight and this one half an hour later. Can you guess what happened here? This wizard didn't push her. He was actually trying to save her by raising his hands and casting a spell. And he succeeded, as we can see from the second picture. The winter ball is over. Stuart throws an after party for teachers at his apartment. Everything goes well, but the next day, Stuart finds out that someone had stolen the rarest and most expensive spell book from his secret library. Stuart has never told anyone about this room. 
but the lock isn't broken, which means that the thief knew a special spell to open the door. Only four guests possess this level of magic, Ambrose, Morgana, Rosamond, and Richard. Stuart rushes to the teacher's room. He questions all the suspects. Each teacher claims to have nothing to do with the robbery. Can you guess who's the thief? Ambrose, his coat is missing one gold button because he dropped it at the crime scene. Meanwhile, Ambrose looks through the spell book and finds a potion recipe that allows teleporting anywhere. But unfortunately, the last three ingredients are encoded. Here's a hint to crack the first one. It's a flower that can be found between the nose and the chin. Any idea what it might be? Here's the next hint. What kind of vegetable do people look forward to getting every month? <laughs> Celery. And this clue will lead you to the final ingredient. What kind of room can you eat? Mushroom. Ambrose finishes the potion and teleports to an unknown place. In the evening, Stuart arranges an urgent Zoom call with his fellow wizards. They're all currently in the same city, but they don't have time to meet offline. Unfortunately, their video call gets interrupted by a stranger. Can you spot the imposter? All the wizards live in the same city, which means they're in the same time zone. The call takes place in the evening. It should be dark outside, but this guy is in the middle of a sunny day. Therefore, he's the imposter. Stuart goes to the magic market to buy special ingredients for a potion that will help him find the stolen book. One violet costs 10 bronze coins, and the price for one lily is 15 coins. Can you calculate the price of this one star flower? One star flower will cost 20 bronze coins. Each flower costs 2.5 coins per petal. And this particular star flower has eight petals. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Let's spend the next 10 minutes or so on a nice and refreshing brain workout, shall we? Ready, go! There are some flowers growing in the field and some bees flying over them. How many flowers and bees are there if both of the following statements are true? If all the bees land on all the flowers, one bee for a flower, one bee won't get a flower. If every two bees decide to share a flower, one flower will be left without a bee. If you answered that there were four bees and three flowers, you're absolutely right. Anna majored in accounting at university. Her roommates wanted to test her intelligence. They took three envelopes and wrote some messages on them. Then they put the answers to Anna's exam questions in one of the envelopes. Only one envelope had a truthful message written on it. The other two were false. Anna wasn't allowed to open the envelopes and could only pick one. The first message read, there are no exam answers here. The second one was, the exam answers are here. And the third message read, the exam answers aren't in the second envelope. Which envelope should Anna pick? The third one, it tells the truth, which means the exam answers are in the first envelope. A businessman was about to go through a security check at the airport when he realized someone had taken his luggage. The airport police had three suspects. 
Lisa said, I wouldn't take someone's old brown bag. I have my own. Mike explained he was a light traveler and didn't have luggage. He put everything in his backpack. Rob had a broken arm and a sprained ankle. He could hardly carry anything. The police immediately knew who had done it. Can you figure it out? It was Lisa. Nobody told her the luggage was brown. One day, Detective Morris was patrolling a local park. As soon as he entered it, he saw several bags with sand. He kept walking and soon came across a picnic basket and binoculars. A few feet further, he saw some items of clothing and a large, colorful sheet. There was also an unconscious man lying on the ground. The detective immediately figured out what had happened. Can you? The man was flying in a hot air balloon. When it started to lose altitude, he tried to make the balloon lighter, but his attempt was unsuccessful. When several friends decided to play cards, they noticed that a few cards had been lost. But they found out that if they dealt the rest of the cards among four people, three cards would remain. If they dealt these cards between three people, two cards would remain. And if they distributed the cards among five people, again, two cards would remain. How many cards were left in the pack? There were 47 cards left in the pack. Let's see. If 47 is divided by 4, 3 is left out. And if 47 is divided by either 3 or 5, 2 is left out. Scott and Mary were on vacation. One day, Mary told Scott she couldn't go to the beach with him because she was feeling unwell. When Scott came back to the room to grab his phone, Mary was gone. He found her by the pool and asked, Are you alone here? She nodded, but Scott immediately realized she was lying. How? There were two drinks on her table and two fruit platters. And now, I've got probably one of the coolest tasks for you. I'll show you different products, and you'll need to figure out if they're real products or cakes. Let's start! It looks like a regular bag of Doritos. Can it be anything else? Look at that, it's a cake. Here is a pretty normal cheeseburger, I would say. Mm. But what secret is it hiding? It's cake again. Wow, I'd love to try it. Oh, a tube of toothpaste. Can it be cake too? Ah, no, just some regular toothpaste. Thought so. And some good old toilet paper, right? Oh, you must be kidding me. It looks so realistic. Mmm, a corn cob. Yummy. It looks delicious, but can it be a cake? Oh my, it is. I'm not sure what I'd prefer now, though. A cake or some sweet corn? How about this sneaker? Is it real or edible? And again, it's a cake. How is it even possible? Oh my god. Now, it must be an orange, right? There's no way it can be a cake. It just looks too realistic. And indeed, it's a real fruit. An eggplant or a cake shaped like an eggplant? That's the question. Oh, I see. It's the real thing. Okay, what have we got here? A banana. A pretty realistic banana, if you ask me. Can it be a cake? (laughs) 
Apparently, the answer is yes, it can. Wow. Ooh. How about this cup of coffee with milk? I can't believe my eyes. It's a cake. You've got to be kidding me. Oh my God. And the last one, the toughest. Is it a clock or a cake? I mean, I'm almost sure it's a real clock, but you never know. It's a cake. Wow, this task has blown my mind. But back to our detective riddles. Amy won $20 million in the lottery. The night after she received the money, she stayed at the most expensive hotel and made a video. It was about her life and how she hadn't seen her sister since childhood. The next day, three girls showed up, claiming to be her sister. All of them looked so much alike, but which one tells the truth? It's the lady on the right. She has the same mole as Amy on her cheek, a tattoo with the letter A, and a tattoo with two girls holding hands. Mrs. Kim called the school principal to report someone had taken her student's test. She added that she had noticed a stranger wearing school clothes, gloves, and a red mask. This person also had three star tattoos on their fingers. The principal didn't believe her. Why? She said the person was wearing gloves, but then how did she see three star tattoos on the intruder's fingers? Ah. Two friends, Mark and Timothy, were walking home from the supermarket with their purchases. That was the last week before the winter holidays, so they had a lot of bags. Mark kept complaining about how heavy his bags were. Then, Timothy told him, I don't understand what you're upset about. If you gave me one of your bags, I would have twice as many bags as you. And if I gave you one of my bags, we would have the same number. How many bags were the guys carrying? Timothy had seven bags, while Mark was goofing off and carrying only five bags. The art museum owner was visiting the construction site to see the progress. At some point, he left his briefcase with important documents on the table. A worker grabbed it and ran away. The museum owner didn't see who it was, but he immediately called the police. There were three suspects. The architect said he had been talking on the phone trying to get electricity for the site as there was none. The manager told the police he had been teaching his staff to work as a team. The electrician explained he had been down in the basement trying to fix a broken lamp. The detectives immediately figured out who was lying. Can you? It was the electrician. There was no electricity at the construction site. Oh, no. Soon after Bob became prom king, he vanished. His teachers were looking for him everywhere. Ah. They believed there were three people who could be behind his disappearance. Bob's rival Joe said he had been dancing all night with his girlfriend and hadn't seen Bob. Bob's classmate Dennis claimed he hadn't been feeling so well, so he spent all night in the lounge. Laura, Bob's secret admirer, said she had been counting the votes. The teachers immediately realized who knew something about Bob's disappearance. And have you figured it out? It was Laura. Bob had already become prom king. She didn't need to count the votes. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Avatar changed our cinematic experience forever. You think you're the biggest Avatar fan in the world, so let's check that out. Grab a pen and a piece of paper and count your correct answers. We'll start out easy. How did Jake Sully end up in the Pandora program? A. He applied and finally got called. B. He met some guys on the street that thought he had what it took to survive on the planet. Or C. He replaced his twin brother, Thomas Sully. It's the letter C, duh. You know what they say. 
When one door closes, another one opens. Jake got a new lease on life, even though he had no idea about that when he said yes. Pandora is located in a galaxy far, far away from Earth. How long did it take for Earthlings to arrive at the other blue planet? A. 11 years, 2 months, and 55 days. B. 7 months and 26 days. C. 5 years, 9 months, and 22 days. If you chose the letter C, then you chose correctly. Jake and a team of scientists and other Marines slept for almost six years in cryogenic technology, which is when they freeze people so that they don't age and don't even feel like they're sleeping at all. Ah, the world of Pandora, the host planet of the species of humanoid life that are called A. The Wavi B. The Pevi or C. The Navi It's the Na'vi, of course, and they are divided into several different tribes. The tribe we get to know more about in the movie is called the Omatakaya tribe. Early on in the movie, we see Jake try out his avatar. He steps out into the Pandoran wilderness with Dr. Grace Augustine and Norm to try and look for some samples. Right there, Jake is surprised by a scary specimen of Pandora wildlife. What's the name of the animal that runs after him? Viper Wolf. Thanator, Mountain Banshee. Did you say Thanator? Then you got it right. This carnivorous animal is believed to be the apex predator of Pandora. In Navi, its name means dry mouth bringer of fear. Yikes! Poor Jake. Later in the movie, we're introduced to Pandora's floating mountains. These mountains are also known as the Sightseeing Mountains, the Hallelujah Mountains, the Sacred Mountains. You bet the correct answer is the letter B. The Hallelujah Mountains sure are a sight. We're told that they float due to the high amount of unobtainium buried in the solid of Pandora. And if you remember the plot, you'll know that this mineral is the entire reason why humans went to Pandora in the first place. This one proves you are really paying attention. How many times did Neytiri save Jake Sully from the dangers of Pandora? Once. Twice. Three times. Four times. Fourth time's a charm. You know, in classic fairy tales, it's usually the guy that saves the girl. But not in Pandora. Neytiri is powerful and skillful, and she knew her way around the forest better than Jake. He did come through, though. Which of these is not a Navi word? Omatakaya. Ewa. Ikran. Crimrose. Hmm, what on earth is Crimrose? It surely doesn't belong in this fictional universe. According to the story, Neytiri told Jake only those who can fly a certain predator have the power to unite all the tribes of Pandora. What is the name of this predator? Torak. Torub. Able Rider. It's the first option, Torek, which translates to the last shadow, is considered one of the most powerful animals for the Navi. A fighter that can fly this animal is recognized as Torek Makto. I bet you probably got all these questions right, didn't you? They were too easy. Let's up the level. James Cameron, the writer and director of Avatar, had to shelve the movie for a long time because no studio would fund it when he first pitched the idea. Which year did Cameron first pitch the movie? 1989 1999 2005 
James Cameron had the idea for Avatar in 1999, but the CGI effects he wanted for the movie would sum up a budget of $400 million, and no studio wanted to fund it. He finally got accepted a few years later, and even so, the movie took four years to make, from pre to post-production. Pandora Wildlife is full of bioluminescent fauna and flora that make you feel like on the inside of a dream. There's one place in the world where you can get a similar feeling. Which country is it located in? Ecuador Namibia New Zealand It's in New Zealand, of course. New Zealand is home to caves that host glowworms. They are a bioluminescent species that sparkle with a blue color. If you're lucky to get a tour down there, you'll feel like you're wandering around the damp forests of Pandora. Before filming, James Cameron took his cast to a place where they could experience a real-life tropical forest. Where did they travel to? Hawaii Bora Bora The Amazon Forest The director took Avatar actors on a trip to Hawaii. As there would be no real-life forest during the production of the movie, he wanted actors to feel and remember the sensations of being in a live forest. They would spend the day hiking and learning how to interact with the dense nature. Let's head to the true or false section of this quiz. The Navi language is a real language that exists in New Zealand. Is this true or false? This is completely false. The Navi language was created exclusively for the movie Avatar. James Cameron hired linguist Paul Frommer to construct a language that would be easy for actors to pronounce, but would not resemble any human language. Frommer created about 1,000 words for the cast to speak. James Cameron is a deep sea aficionado. He dived over 10 times to the bottom of the ocean where the Titanic wreck is located. True or false? This is true. Cameron has said in several interviews that he's addicted to the bottom of the sea and that he accepted to direct Titanic in order to afford more submersible visits to the bottom of the ocean. James Cameron chose a plant-based menu for everyone at the set of Avatar 1. True or false? This is true. The filmmaker is a vegan, and he made sure that all the food on set was vegan too. Yummy! The image of the avatars was based on a dream that the director had when he was younger. True or false? False! It was actually based on a dream that his mother had of a 12-foot-tall blue woman. Cameron used this as an idea to build the Avatar characters. The first Avatar movie reached a box office success of $1 billion. Is this true or false? This is so true! Avatar 1 was such a commercial success that it's kind of shocking. Not even James Cameron suspected the public would react so well. It ran for over 230 days in cinemas, and it generated over $2 billion from international markets during its initial theatrical run. For the final round, let's get down to the basics of Avatar 2, The Way of the Water. I promise there'll be no spoilers. Kate Winslet is reunited with director James Cameron after their big success, Titanic. During the filming of Avatar, the actress found herself having to act underwater for most of the movie. And she broke Tom Cruise's record for holding her breath underwater for filming the complex takes she needed to film. Can you guess how long she held her breath for? 5 minutes? 7 minutes? 8 minutes?
the actress held her breath for seven minutes while filming Avatar 2. She says a person needed to have a lot of control over their mind in order to stay that long underwater. Phew, can you imagine? So, how did you do? Are you a native Pandorian yet? Well, see you next time! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.